Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Free Marketeers. Uh, I'm Martin van Staden, I'm joined by Jock Jonker and uh, Zeke Sintembu, uh, our new two uh, additions to the staff here. You've already met them, but we're doing another podcast of them. Um, Piaki and Chris are in a uh, hours-long meeting right now, so we don't envy them for that. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we we're probably going to keep it a bit shorter today because uh, I believe there's going to be load shedding in about 20 or so minutes. So that's our lot as South Africans. <laughs> Again, stage four load shedding. Uh, it was stage two up until uh, this morning, but yeah, uh, they've they've escalated it. So yeah, let's start out with the uh, major news story uh, that's been uh, developing, I think, over the last few hours, and that is... South African Airways has now been placed under business rescue, or they're um, busy with that process, mm, getting it initiated. Yeah, place, yes. yeah so um, it's a very interesting time. Uh, I think it's the first time that a state-owned enterprise has been being placed under business oh, rescue. Yeah. Um, and I mean, that's it's it's definitely new ground. Um, yes. And yeah, I don't know, Zeke. Let's start exciting with you. Ground. What do you what it's, do you think about it? It's exciting ground. I'm I'm hoping that it's placed under business rescue and it eventually shuts down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Hopefully, the recommendations of the practitioner would be for the entire organization to just shut down because there's no reason for the state to be to have a mm -hmm. flag carrier mm -hmm. or to actually have a company that transports people because as the market has proven, private mm -hmm. businesses are much more better at transporting mm -hmm. people and generally delivering services or products. So hopefully it shuts down. Hopefully yeah, absolutely. The, the rescue <laughs> yields those positive results. Although yeah. unions may be very, very mad at me mm -hmm. if they hear me say that. Oh, that's fine. Uh, we're, we're used to that. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, one of the um, uh, business rescue is meant to uh, stand in the way of liquidation, but one of the recommendations that can be made through a business yes. rescue or not a recommendation, but the, the practitioner can discover that uh, there's nothing to salvage and then it needs to be liquidated. So, I mean, I think all of us agree that at SAA, there's probably nothing to salvage. Um, no. So I don't or know. From a couple of planes. Yeah, but I, what I've heard is that they don't own the planes. They lease all of them. Or yeah, they, they, I'm not really sure about the ownership structure. All I know is I can agree with Zykes. Yeah. Uh, SA should just be killed off. Um, I'm fairly certain the practitioner will find that liquidation is the only mm -hmm. way forward. Will approach the court for an order mm -hmm. to liquidate SAA. Mm. And um, that will be a slow and tedious process, but the creditors will get a lot more out of that than mm. a disorderly liquidation process that was not preceded by business mm -hmm. rescue. So I don't think people should consider this as SAA trying to avoid liquidation. I think they mm. know they will be liquidated. Mm. I just think they saw the pressure that Solidarity was putting on them. They don't want to be forced by the courts and have that over there, hanging over their heads mm -hmm. as as a state-owned entity and the government being embarrassed. Mm -hmm. And then now they're just trying to save face on the one hand, but I think at the end of the day, they know they are going to be liquidated. And um, I think it's also good for the creditors in this situation. Mm -hmm. They'll probably get a little bit more of the debt, mm -hmm. hopefully a lot more cents on the rand that they mm -hmm. can get returned to them. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we'll see. But as I said, I'm not sure about the ownership structure, especially with regards to the planes itself. Mm -hmm. But I do have there are some assets that can be recovered. Hopefully, mm. private company like Comair mm -hmm. can can buy up those assets, yeah. but maybe expand their market share a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, as far as I know, they are they also have the largest market share in mm -hmm. the domestic industry at the moment. Yeah, no, it would be interesting to see what happens to the SA brand. So yes, they, they may yeah. uh, sell that. I mean, I think they'll get a lot of money for it. So that may actually help paying off some of the debt uh, mm. because a private company will then fly the South African Airways brand. And yes. that's probably going to be very valuable uh, to become the flag carrier of South Africa, but be a private company at the yeah. same time, which I think most countries do nowadays. Their flag carriers are private. Um, so, yeah, that's that's absolutely uh uh, preferable to to what we currently have in South Africa. I, uh, I'm not even sure what the numbers are on SAA's debt, but it's it's astronomical. And then we're not even talking about ESCOM and like mm. half a trillion rand worth of debt. It's it's totally ridiculous <laughs> that these companies were allowed to continue operating at all after they started down this uh, this path of of destruction and recklessness. Yeah, I mean, if you look at ESCOM's latest financial report of mm. March 2019, in one financial year, they Cash and cash and cash equivalents decreased by I think it was eighty seven percent. 
That, that's um, like it's it's any, absolutely ridiculous. Any other private business operating in the in the market closes down mm-hmm. with those losses. Mm-hmm. Like state-owned entities just show how perverted the state is in essence because they to support mm-hmm. the to support their unions who are their alliance partners who essentially mm-hmm. entrench the support during political processes they continue mm-hmm. giving money to these state-owned entities which would have been killed off a long mm-hmm. time ago like and any other companies having 87 percent in losses there's a cause for concern but for mm-hmm. escom it has been happening for such a long time that it has been normalized right now and nothing will happen escom is just horrible mm-hmm. hopefully it follows also in, in the business rescue operations yeah. just like mm-hmm. saa is currently doing yeah, no, I I hope the unions uh, learn uh, that that it is better to have your members as employees of private companies because then they'll stay employed and they'll continue mm-hmm. paying union dues. Yeah, but I mean, surely the unions under could have seen that this is going to happen. I mean, mm. SAA, it looked like uh, two weeks ago that it was going to just close down right there and then, and then everyone would have been unemployed. But if you do it in a structured way, you sell off the assets, yeah. You maybe uh, get into an agreement with the new airline buying your assets that some of your employees will work mm. for them. I mean, it it's just better for everyone. This this yeah. ideological socialist ideological commitment to having the state run companies is it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's and ridiculous. I mean, it's been proven to not work, except like in Norway where they just mm. have so much money. It's just insane how much mm. money the society has. So yeah, but they, they, can, the iron- they can afford it. The irony there is. They make their money off of fossil fuels, more specifically yeah. oil, which is something that the socialists also despise. So it's yes. sort of ironic that you give out they brandish Norway mm-hmm. as this utopia. Meanwhile, Norway is extremely reliant on oil, something they hate. Mm-hmm. Um, there's massive conflict in Norway now between the environmentalist movement and the labor movements mm-hmm. because the Norwegian government wants to move away from oil. That'll cost jobs. Mm-hmm. This is something I've been saying all along. <laughs> Environmentalism and pro labor is not. Really yeah, compatible. No, sure. And I mean, even Norway is extremely reliant on. I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's their pension fund, mm-hmm. the government oh, has set yeah. up. It's extremely reliant yeah. on Wall Street, for instance, mm-hmm. and on financial companies. Another thing that, yeah, that sovereign that, wealth that, fund. Yeah, on the mm-hmm. sovereign wealth fund. Thank yeah. you. And then it's another thing that they're extremely reliant upon, which they despise. I mm-hmm. mean, the irony is just. It's just absolutely hilarious. It's true. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, also Scandinavian countries tend to do very well in the Fraser Institute, yes. like Freedom World Economic Freedom Index. So yeah. that shows that even though there are state-owned entities, the general economic environment is very conducive for mm. growth and mm-hmm. the creation and accumulation of wealth. So mm. the comparisons between our social democracy and the Scandinavian social democracy isn't a very good one, really, because we have state-owned entities plus mm. a anti-business business mm-hmm. uh, economic mm-hmm. environment which is just a mm-hmm. double whammy on our general prosperity levels yes. yeah yeah i think in, in scandinavia property rights are very very deeply entrenched yes so definitely. The government I mean, will never come and take something from you without at yeah. least without very market related compensation yeah. and i mean a couple of years back a government official of denmark came out and said listen he wants to correct this narrative that they are a quote-unquote mm-hmm. socialist country mm-hmm. They are a capitalist country. Now, I, I don't really agree with them that they're a full-blown capitalist country, mm-hmm. but the fact of the matter is they are extremely reliant on capitalism. Mm-hmm. They are not rich because of their social measures. Mm-hmm. They are rich because of their capitalist measures. Yeah, they used to be True. very, very free markets, and I and yeah. I think uh, still the case is that it's a big welfare state of high taxes, but the regulation is very reasonable i would say i mean it, like you can register a business in the scandinavian yes. companies in like a day or something less mm. so i mean i've always like liked the saying that you can either have a welfare state or you can have a regulatory state but you cannot have a welfare regulatory state which is what south africa is extremely keen on and now we're seeing yeah. what what the consequences of and that is. you don't countries people have this um insane idea that a country gets rich through welfare <laughs> You don't get yeah. rich through that. You get mm-hmm. rich through free and private enterprise, yeah. through people reacting to the market mechanisms, mm-hmm. the price mechanism more specifically, people trading with each other, being free to do that. You get rich through economic freedom. Yeah. And if you look at these Norwegian, um, these Scandinavian countries you know, that are based on the Nordic model, that's how they got rich. They yeah. were rich long before they started implementing these mm-hmm. measures. Yeah. But that's just something that they choose to ignore here. No, absolutely. And it's, it's an uncomfortable narrative because 
what that says is that if you really want a welfare state, and we're like, okay, sh fair enough, you want a welfare state. First, we need about two centuries of free markets, and then we can talk about mm. it. That's the only way it's ever going to work. This uh, stuff is expensive. Yes. There's no yeah. such thing as a free meal. It's not free healthcare. It's not free education. I prefer the term universal or mm -hmm. healthcare education or maybe even free at the points of service. But even yeah. if you look at countries that do have universal healthcare, there's a thing in economics called moral hazard. So you still need to charge people some fee for something to, literally to prevent them from doing stupid stuff yeah it's an incentive all the time. thing yeah. it's an incentive mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. so there's no such thing as something that is free yeah. and if you think no the welfare state will make us rich no the welfare state costs a lot there mm -hmm. may be returns i'm not disputing that yeah. but it costs a lot in the first place to implement and if you don't have the tax base if you don't have the economy to support mm -hmm. that it's an absolutely ridiculous assertion to make mm -hmm that so you can just get rich through the welfare state capitalism be damned mm -hmm. that's that 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 logic of getting rich through the welfare state is has been the greatest detriment of africa because most african countries after they got independence they didn't have a strong enough tax base due mm. to mm. the heavy restrictions that were put on the economic activity of those people by the colonial state and even prior to that due to, just to the sheer lack of development in economic activity and then when they got independence they went the welfare route instead of going for free markets and mm -hmm. essentially encouraging economic activity and the accumulation of wealth so as to have welfare at a later point and which is why african nations most of them seem to be stuck in this in the cycle of poverty whereby they have large amount of welfare programs and they have a tax base that mm. is shrinking constantly due mm. to as i said since welfare programs cost a lot as jacques said the taxes will be high and skilled people don't like paying high taxes mm. so they'll emigrate as we're currently seeing in south africa mm -hmm. so that essentially creates a cycle whereby the end of it is a failed state like zimbabwe mm. whereby you have mm. problems even feeding your people yeah. and instances like that so it's very sad actually mm because welfare in general does not make people rich i know mm. this coming from the township where i know a lot of people who receive welfare mm. and their material conditions do not improve actually mm. what it creates is it creates a dependency on the state yeah. and someone will necessarily not have the incentive or the drive to go and get their own income mm -hmm. because they know that they have a guaranteed mm. income each and every month mm. and that is just generally sad yeah. actually because i'm quite concerned about the upliftment of my continent and mm. we seem to be heading in the wrong direction yeah and i mean talking about people leaving i think it's some a number like 800 or so high net worth individuals are leaving this country every month it's it's a number like that i'm not sure about these specifics but they're, mm. they're they, they that is the 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 source of the taxes that prop up the welfare state. And they're not leaving because of high welfare, they're leaving because of the regulations. Uh, they're leaving because of threats like expropriation without compensation. They're leaving because the government told them, hey, we're going to take away your private health care and force you to come onto NHI and, and come to our hospitals. That is the problem. That's what's mm -hmm. chasing them away. So, I mean, if, if you're left leftward inclined and you're watching this, I mean, you, you have to choose. We would prefer that there is no welfare state, there is no regulatory state, people are free. But when you get down to brass tacks, I think you need to choose. Either you're, you want a welfare state that looks after the poor, and for that you need money, you need to be able to afford it. Or you have no welfare state, but you have a state that regulates things also in the public interest. But that also requires money and that, that requires people to... Uh, to stick around and i mean uh, people don't want to so yeah it uh, you need to choose uh, unfortunately uh, well for us i guess it's to an extent it's, it's fortunate because we don't want you to get get both of them uh, uh, definitely <laughs> don't want you to get either <laughs> yeah no exactly yeah, but but so. getting both is, is the worst mm, because that's yeah. what's happening in south africa and i mean expropriation without compensation the latest bill was the the bill amending the constitution was published two days ago yesterday or something um and it's terrible. It's it's just it's about as bad as it could be. And if you think eight hundred people a month leaving is bad, that's probably gonna pick up into the thousands mm. when the moment that this constitutional amendment is actually made. So yeah, be very careful because you may just find there is no tax base left to prop up any kind of social safety mm. net, and then you'll need to be uh, rely on uh, on on like African countries generally do on uh, custom dues. That's where uh, most of their state income comes from and uh, foreign aid from the west mm -hmm. and yeah that's gonna create a cycle that 
South Africa will probably never escape mm. from. Um, but yeah, so to veer off into a, a different topic, um, we have talked about the police on this podcast before, and it's uh, uh, safety and crime and safety is one of the biggest concerns that South Africans have. Um, and a video was released today, I think, about a woman who um, was pulled over quarter to 12 at night. No, um, they say some reports say 11, some yeah. are quarter to 12. But, but very late. late. At night, late yeah. at night, yes. And, and uh, there's something called the blue light protocol, I think, yes. that says that, it, and then this was formulated by Justice Project South Africa. And uh, I the, think it was Justice Project, something along those yeah, lines. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's them in, in cooperation with the National Road Traffic Corporation or something. So mm. government was involved in the formulation of this protocol. And the protocol says that if you are concerned that whoever is trying to pull you over may not be a real police officer you should slow down and drive to a, a public place or a place with uh, cctv cameras yeah that's well lit yeah that's a well lit area drive mm. slowly and indicate to them in some way mm. that with your hazards your hazard indicators on that you are you're complying with them but you're just going to drive on until things are a bit more kosher mm. and this i think is what happened because uh, so the only thing we saw on this video is the woman arriving at a well-lit pe uh, garage a petrol mm. station uh, and parking where the cctv cameras are and then complying getting out of her car and then the police run into the picture and start r uh, pulling her out of her car shoving her to the ground um, obviously there's no sound on on cctv but it's it's clear that the police are using excessive force, and this isn't the ordinary police. It's the it's the traffic police, the Tswane uh, Metro Police, and my assumption there is that they try to pour over for a traffic a traffic violation. Mm, obviously, probably, yes. so using violence like that for someone who at best was either mm. speeding or didn't yield at a, a, a traffic mm, light didn't uh, stop at a stop street at, at 11 yeah. at night at that i mean to me that doesn't sit well i mean uh zakes what what's your take on <laughs> on the police doing stuff like this it doesn't sit well at all i generally don't like especially these discretionary powers that the police have to stop mm -hmm. people on the road without any due cause just if they suspect mm -hmm. that you may be breaking the law or something mm -hmm. like that i'm not a huge fan of it really if the police were to stop me they should stop me within defined rules that mm -hmm. are available to everyone so that i know when i'm in contravention of the law and i know mm -hmm. when i'm when i'm not and when i'm not in contravention of the law i should never ever stop for the police mm -hmm. because i have my freedom to continue doing whatever i deem fit so mm -hmm. The scenario doesn't make me happy at all because as you are describing the police seem to have used excessive force mm. and with no regard to because if they're traffic police then mm. the most she could have done was violate a traffic Mm -hmm. a traffic regulation or something yeah it's not like she was a murderer or precisely anything like that. which yeah. is never ever mm. ever should attract that amount of force mm -hmm. on her or on the police part so yeah that mm -hmm. was that was quite horrible on yeah. the police and just to debunk some th some narratives doing the rounds here, especially on social media, is that the police were trying to affect an arrest. Well, yes, in the one sense they wanted to arrest her, but you could see they were more angry at her because of the audacity that she dares ignore their order to pull over. And this sense that she was trying to flee an arrest and avoid being arrested. If that was the case, why did she stop at exactly. a garage, open a door for the police? Yeah. She unlocked her door for the... I assume mm. it was locked, but maybe it wasn't, but she didn't lock no, it. No, she opened it and she mm. was starting to get out, but they came yeah, to her. Yeah, which shows yeah. that she just wanted to get to a well-lit area. Mm -hmm. And then obviously she's refusing the manhandling her because yeah. why on earth would you allow the police to manhandle you if you just wanted to get to a well-lit area? And this blue light protocol, this is not an official law, but this is another mm. point that I think should be made is you have this blue light protocol that's confusing people. You mm. have... The actual law is saying you need to pull over when the police yeah. stop you. But then on the police's website, as you yeah. showed earlier, they say you're allowed to drive to police station. You yes. should just put on your hazards, I think, and yeah. drive slowly and show yeah. them to follow you. Mm. I don't think the cops are even going to care about that. Mm. And if these yeah, well. cops really feared for their safety, why not approach her with guns drawn? They didn't. They, they, didn't they, they, yeah. they knew she was innocent. They knew mm -hmm. she just didn't want to stop when they told her to stop. She wanted yeah. to get to a safe place. And if they were really, if she was really fleeing, 
she stopped at this petrol um, station or petrol pump. They stopped in the one mm. adjacent to her, but on the other side of another petrol pump. Mm. They didn't stop in front of her car to try to block her from. Yeah, they away. clearly knew that she wasn't. They fleeing. clearly yeah. knew that she wasn't fleeing. Mm. Yet they manhandled her like mm. that. Um, it is unreasonable force. It is irrational, completely mm -hmm. irrational, and I think they should be jailed for assault. Yeah, no, I, I would, I would think that she actually would have a claim, a civil, a civil claim, and maybe a criminal claim against mm, those yeah, officers. Definitely. Um, but, but I mean, this, none of this is happening in a vacuum. Now, it has happened in this country that police officers, that actual police officers, but then also fake police officers who steal police cars and yeah. dress up in police uh, get up, they s kidnap, rob rape and murder people this this happens this is something that happens in south africa if you happen not to not be a south african this is something where basically if we read it in the news it's like oh that happened again it's mm -hmm. not it's it's common so you would expect things like the blue light protocol and the, the police themselves thankfully on their website to say yes okay we acknowledge there's a problem yeah so just drive to a police station or in, in the case of the blue light protocol to to a petrol station or to a well-lit place but the law itself which is i think in this case it's the national road traffic act says that if you're pulled over you must stop immediately so there is a as you say there's a, a, a inconsistency between the law and between what seems to be policy and and certainly between the conduct of the police because they don't care what the law says they don't care what the policy says they're just offended that this person didn't stop the moment they said stop mm, um so i mean and and that, that doesn't even go into the question of why are they pulling people over at 12 at night when they mm. should know that people at this time of night mm. unless of course they're totally reckless and we don't know in this case yes. but but it seems unlikely uh mm. to to me i mean the the, the evidence yes. and, and the information will come out but i've seen it before i've also driven home late at night and you see the cops on the side of the road pulling people over mm. yeah. uh, i'm sorry i'm not stopping I'm no, no, I, I think it's stop? unreasonable like, to do so. Especially in, in, in a country like ours, where yeah. the threat of being hijacked is very real. Yeah. You're most likely or not, you're driving very fast because you don't want to drive slow and give your hijacker the opportunity to actually mm. do his job. Mm -hmm. So really, I, I see no reason why the, sh the cops should stop people at night. Not only that, like if, even if the worst case scenario were true in this case, the woman was violated the Road Traffic Management Act or something mm -hmm. like that. The force is disproportionate and like Absolutely. the response to them is highly mm -hmm. disproportionate really because there's, there's yeah. no reason for them to have mm -hmm. exited in that manner mm -hmm. even if the lady had broken the law mm -hmm. and was fleeing according mm -hmm. to them mm -hmm. there was really no reason for them to act in that manner and just shows really the priorities that our traffic officers have when they chase down people like this lady who did not really violate any serious mm -hmm. crime yet mm -hmm. we have a plethora of criminals that constantly yeah. get away and nothing seems to be done about them mm. and i mean you see them approaching the car she opens the door and they immediately start pulling and tugging on her yeah it wasn't like she got out they then tried to respectfully quote unquote respectfully arrest her mm. and then she um tried to um resist mm. they immediately started assaulting her they should have asked her to get out of the vehicle. Mm, they screamed at her, get out of the vehicle. And she was about to get out yeah. and they started pulling her out of the process. vehicle. She was in the process, yeah. No, these cops were blatantly wrong. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I mean, this whole thing, I saw a comment that, you know, if you're not a criminal, you don't have to, you don't, there's no reason to fear the police. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's, that's nonsense. <laughs> that's in this country, nonsense. that's, especially in this country, that's total, total hogwash. I mean, hogwash. in 2013, ex-police commissioner Ria Piecha, had to institute a special task team to investigate the blue light gangs yeah. who dress up as cops and rob people. Yeah. A couple of years after that, a, th a segment was on, I think, Carte Blanche about how easy it is to get these cop clothes. Yeah. Do it. And even now, this is still happening. Mm -hmm. Cops literally robbing people. And even if the issue is not the cop, um, or not the cops robbing people and criminals dressing up as cops and robbing people, and even if that's not the issue, cops themselves are, are involved in yeah. crime on a massive scale. Yes. Yeah. And we are not stereotyping all cops. We are not saying all police mm -hmm. are bad. There are a lot of them who do their job that we have respect for. But they put their life on the line, yep. literally. We've discussed this, not on the podcast, though, but in private. Like we, we think they get paid way too little to put their lives on mm -hmm. the line, etc. But the fact of the matter is there is a crime problem amongst the police. And there is a problem amongst criminals mm. who, where it's so easy to be able to dress up as a police yep. officer and just rob and steal 
rob and steal from people. And yeah. I mean, this was a woman who was alone in a car. Yeah. I mean, we are, we don't have the highest rape rate in the world, but we are known as one of the rape capitals top of three. the world. Top three, yeah. Top three, easy. Mm. Are you seriously judging her? for trying for not wanting to pull over yeah it's, it's ridiculous we as yeah. the public cannot tell who is a good cop and who is a bad yeah, cop beforehand can't. it's it's impossible and and we understand that 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 may be offensive mm. to good cops mm -hmm. but we have nothing against against the police we we just know that there is this problem and i mean uh, i think it's the corruption perceptions index the latest one i think it's of last year said that among South Africans, the most corrupt, corruptly perceived organization is the South African Police Service. So this is the Metropolis, but the SAPS is seen as the most corrupt organization mm -hmm. in the country by ordinary South Africans. I don't blame them. So, and, and I mean, yes, there's good cops, but when, when you have this perception and you are a good, mm -hmm. you are a good cop, you should know that if you're trying to pull someone over at night, mm -hmm. they do not know that you're a good cop and you should actually like encourage them go on your loudspeaker and say please drive i'm gonna follow you drive to mm. the next police station or something do just be reasonable be aware of the reality in south africa I'm, especially as a police officer be aware of the the crime re reality and the 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 total not if not incompetence total corruption of your colleagues be aware of that do not assume that we know you're a good cop mm. and uh, and i mean parliament is also to blame here the road traffic act national road traffic act should have been amended and i hope is amended at some stage in the future to say that you do not have to pull over immediately and that it is now a matter of law that you may move on to a point where you feel safe and mm. i mean this isn't going to enable crime because if you don't want to be arrested you're going to evade and speed mm. away anyway mm. so that's not the problem and let's be honest here yeah, from a libertarian perspective and this might sound extreme to a lot of people, it will. Mm. We might get some slack for it, but there is no justification for a roadblock simply pulling people over simply mm. because they are on a road. No, yeah. There, there's simply no justification for that. You are, why are you pulling me over? Now you're driving. Yeah. That's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. None of that from from legal perspective, depending on which school of thought you come from, really, the law does not operate when no conflicts exist. And yeah. if I'm just yeah, driving uh, on my on, on my car in the road, I'm not violating anyone's rights. Therefore, yeah. there's no mm. reason for the law to impact me whatsoever. So. Yeah. And there's all argument that, that now, but it's for to make roads safer. It's not even working. Your no. whole goal <laughs> is not even working. No, we not have some of the most dangerous roads in the world. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is it's absolute rubbish. Yeah, I mean, your point is is is, is good because in at common law, which I mean. That's the only real law that exists. It's common law, not not the legislation, the diktat of, of a course. bunch of uh, politicians. Common law is the law that comes about amongst people through thousands of years. The common law has no, no such thing as traffic law. It doesn't exist. There is a rule that says you may not recklessly endanger the yes. health and safety of other people. So for that, yes, there should be traffic police sitting, waiting, looking at someone like swerving around between other cars yes then go Drunk and arrest people, him. but speeding in and of itself no uh parking tickets oh dear goodness don't get me started yes, um ridiculous. it don't ticket me when i park on public property that that's either unowned or that's my property and i know i'm gonna uh, <laughs> trigger a lot of people by saying that but but the point is that this whole regime of traffic law is tainted it's 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 what we call in in, in, in law uh, mala mala prohibitia it's something that's just been prohibited it's not in and of itself wrong mala in se sure. so i i would say get rid of it mm. get get mm -hmm. rid of uh, this notion mm. of traffic law the common law already deals with this yeah. and then the argument against our argument will be like yeah but imagine how impractical it is to have to take everyone to court when you think they've done something wrong. Yes, that's the whole point of due process. Yes. That is the whole point of due process. Yep. It isn't supposed to be practical. It, it isn't supposed, supposed to be, to be easy, practical. Really. It's mm -hmm. just supposed to be right. Absolutely. And that's what we should be concerned with. Yeah. yeah. All right, gentlemen. Thank you for joining me on another episode of The Free Marketeers. I think we need to get off soon because uh, the power is probably going to go out to any minute. Uh, thank you, ESCOM. Uh, we really appreciate it, guys. Uh, but as always, please uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel. That's the big red button right under this video. Uh, like our Facebook page. That is uh, Free Market Foundation South Africa or in the URL facebook.com slash FMFSA. Follow us on Twitter. That's at FMF South Africa. And always visit our 
our website that's www.freemarketfoundation.com one word uh, and yes we uh, are probably no yeah 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 so i'm going away next week friday but i will probably be around still um, but if you're already going on holiday please enjoy it uh, merry christmas and happy new year and yeah uh, we'll see you again next week and cheers don't pull over for cops well <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the yeah, law as, hasn't changed as of yet. So. As a as a lawyer yeah. and an officer of the court, I must encourage you to comply with the positive law as it is stated. Uh, uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, much unfortunately. under much reluctance. But yes, have a good one. Cheerio.